Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we enter into the second week of the season of Lent, today's scripture invites us to have transfiguration moments in our life. Moments where we experience Christ's through the deepest and darkest moments of our lives. The transfiguration in the life of Jesus is an important event in his ministry and his earthly life. One where he reveals to his disciples, the core disciples, Peter, James and John, all of his glory. And to us today in the gospel, we see something very similar. The disciples are taken to the top of the mountain. And this event of the transfiguration opens up their spiritual eyes. They see Jesus in all of his glory. And this incident or this experience is enough for them to realize that he is the son of God. He is the one to, who has come to save Israel, to bring about salvation. Let us pray during this Eucharist that the light of Christ may enter into our lives, that we too may experience a transfiguration of our hearts and our minds, so that we may move closer to being true disciples of Jesus. And as we prepare ourselves to enter into the sacred mysteries, let us humbly at this moment acknowledge the times that we have failed, the times that we have strayed away from the Lord and ask for his pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy on us, we pray, O Lord. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, God brought Abram outside and said, Look towards heaven and number the stars. If you are able to number them, then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, 
and he counted it to him as righteousness. And he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out from your of the kingdoms to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he brought him all these, cut them in half, and laid, laid each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in half. And when birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drew them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell on Abram. And behold, dreadful and great darkness fell upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, behold, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord had made a covenant with Abram, saying, To you, offspring, I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let our response be, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Kindly repeat, The, the Lord, Lord is, is my, my light, light and, and my salvation. salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom should I dread? Response, the, the Lord, Lord is, is my, my light, light and, and my salvation. O oh Lord, hear my voice when I call. Have mercy and answer me. Of you my heart has spoken. Seek his face. Response, the, the Lord, Lord is, is my, my light, light and, and my salvation. salvation. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face from me. Dismiss not your servant in anger. You have been my help. Response, the, the Lord, Lord is, is my light, light and, and my salvation. salvation. Do not abandon or forsake me. I believe I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, he is, be strong. Be sword hearted and wait for the Lord. Response, the, the Lord, Lord is, is my light and my salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and they glory in their shame, with minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Acclamation. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. From a bright cloud, the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. 
and as he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered, and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. Not knowing what he said, as he was saying these things, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and told no one in those days anything of what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, a young man once on one of his travels abroad decided to pick up a beautiful gift that would impress his wife, something that would show his love for her. And so he went to a nice gift store and there he found this beautiful heart that was made of pearls. The speciality of these pearls was that it would glow in the dark. And the man was amazed at this idea. And so he immediately bought this set, this showpiece, and carried it home eagerly to show it to his wife. That night at dinner, he told his wife to put off all the lights. And he excitedly took out this gift from his pocket and opened it before his wife. To his surprise, it was dark, as dark as all the darkness around it. The man was furious, he was disappointed, and he told his wife in anger, this is what happens to us tourists, we are always cheated. And he dropped the box on the table and went off to sleep. The following day, his wife was curious as to what this box or this showpiece exactly was. And so she went and picked it up from the table and looked at it very carefully. There were the words in French. Not understanding what it meant, she took it to a friend who understood the language and she gladly translated it for her. That night, when the man returned home, his wife put off all the lights and took the same box to him. As she opened it before him, the box, the showpiece inside, showpiece inside the box began to glow. It was an exquisite heart shaped made of pearls, glowing beautifully in the dark. My dear friends, the woman had read the instructions on the box that read, if you keep me all day long in the sunlight, I will shine for you all night long in the darkness. Yes, the greater one is in the light, the greater one will be able to shine in the darkest moments. My dear friends, a glow is assured for those who allow the light to enter into themselves. And this light that we speak about in a person is one's holiness that emerges from the depth of one's being. That is a transfiguration experience. Today's gospel, we see something very beautiful and it is explained wonderfully by Saint Luke. He says, Jesus 
took his disciples up the mountain and there he prayed. He wanted to reveal to his disciples his glory and this was the transfiguration. His core disciples, Peter, James and John, he wanted to reveal to them that he was the son of God. Now the disciples had been with him through all of his ministry. They had seen all of his works, his healings, his miracles. But yet, there were doubts in their mind. Their faith was not strong enough to encounter what they were going to face. This incident was not one which Jesus was just exhibiting to them his glory. He wanted to peel away the layers of doubt, the layers of lack of faith, their own pride, their own self-reliance, probably their exterior exhibition of their trust in Jesus. But in deep down, they lacked the faith to trust him wholeheartedly. My dear friends, let us ask ourselves, in our own practice of our Christian faith, have we formed these layers in our own lives? These layers of pride, these layers of self-reliance, these layers of external or exterior piety. Today, through this experience, through this transfiguration, the eyes of the disciples were opened. They began to see the glory of Jesus. And this experience is what gave them the grace, the strength to face what they were going to, that's something that was going to happen in the near future, the passion and death of Jesus. Something that would leave them scattered, something that would leave them lost. This experience was meant to strengthen them during these trying times. Have you also had these transfiguration experiences or moments in our own lives? Surely we do. But many times we have failed to acknowledge, we have failed to realize these moments in our lives. A time maybe when we have said a good word to somebody and that has helped lift up their spirits. Maybe at times when we ourselves have been healed or have experienced support and help from someone through divine intervention that has helped make our lives better in those trying times. Maybe we have experienced forgiveness and healing through the sacraments in the church. Maybe at times when we have gone out of our way to do a small act of charity, of service to the other, and that has brought in us a great sense of joy and satisfaction. Maybe at times when we were in deep pain, someone has reached out to us and helped lift up our spirits. My dear friends, as we look deeper into ourselves, we will discover many such moments, many such experiences where we have had these so-called transfiguration moments in our lives. And today, our Master invites us to grow in a deeper faithfulness and a deeper union with Him through prayer. It is only then that we will begin to see ourselves allow the light of Christ to enter into our own lives. St. Luke's Gospel is called the Gospel of Prayer because he highlights various times, various important moments in the life of Jesus where he goes out and prays. He takes time out to spend time with the Father. At his baptism, it is said, Jesus prays. At the time of choosing the 12 disciples, Jesus goes out and prays. At the time of his ministry, during his healing ministry, Jesus goes out and prays. The disciples ask him, Lord, teach us to pray. And he teaches them the prayer of our Father, to call out to his Father in heaven. In the transfiguration experience today, Jesus prays. At the Garden of Gethsemane, before his passion and death, Jesus prays. The praying master today invites each one of us to grow in this union with him, to take time out, to spend time with him, to learn what it means to be his true witnesses. Let us ask ourselves today, do I take time out to spend a little time in personal prayer? Do I take time out as a family to come together and pray? 
do I come as a community to participate in the Eucharist in the church? The real presence of Jesus. My dear friends, all of us are caught up with different responsibilities, duties, and daily activities that are part of our lives. But can we take a little time out to spend time with the Lord? Let the words of Saint Padre Pio inspire us today. Prayer is the best weapon we possess. Let us glance at the Divine Master who prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane and we will discover the true ladder that unites earth with heaven. My dear, fr my dear friends, let us pray that the Gospel of the Transfiguration today may constantly remind us that if we keep ourselves all day long in the sunlight of His love, we will also experience Him shining in our lives through the darkest moments of our lives. Amen. Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended down to the dead, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now offer up our prayers and intentions before the Lord. Let your response be, Lord, listen to your people praying. Can you repeat? Lord, listen to your people praying. For the Pope, the bishops, and all other leaders of the Church, that they may listen to Jesus, our Good Shepherd, and guide their flock with love and compassion. We pray. Lord, listen to your people praying. For the people of God in the peripheries, those suffering from deprivation, diseases, oppression, and injustice, that they may experience the presence of the compassionate Savior. We pray. Lord, listen, listen to, to your, your people, people pray. For those in medical profession like doctors, nurses, paramedics, and researchers, that they may be empowered by the Holy Spirit to serve those in need with compassion and dedication. We pray. Lord, listen to your people praying. For the consecrated religious men and women, that they may become a prophetic presence in the Lord through their life of witnessing to Christ who is chaste, poor, poor and obedient, we pray. Lord, listen to your people praying. For those working in various media of communication, that they may always adhere to the values of truth and justice rather than to sensationalism and popularity rating, we pray. Lord, listen to your people praying. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers that we have placed before you at your altar. Hear and answer them if they be pleasing to you and according to thy divine will. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lifting my praise to you 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Without accept your sacrifice, glory of His name. Let us pray. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of all our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Put them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show, even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Philip Neri, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we say the prayer our Lord and Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the God and the glory and glory in yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, God you, you take, take away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, God you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you take, take away the sins of the world. Of Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. With the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Since we cannot receive Jesus at this moment sacramentally, let us make an act of spiritual communion and experience the presence of Jesus who is in us, who dwells in our hearts, who abides in us. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Never be discouraged. 
it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers, even now, of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wow.